Clash Royale. Welcome everybody to the second day of Africa versus SKT here at our ground postseason playoffs. It's going to be another great day. Today is going to be the all kill format between these two teams. That is right. It is day two and SK Telecom T1 maintains their third place ranking despite, well, you know, landing in seventh place in that round three. Africa having their best round just narrowly getting into that fourth place spot over CJ. And now, if they don't win here, it's all over. And SKTT1 will move on to the next round for that Telecom War. But, you know, Afrika Freaks, they could turn it around here. And if they do, we will have a broadcast tomorrow. But if not, it's not happening. So SKT wants to close this one out with a 2-0 sweep. And they brought one of their best players, Innovation, to start things off. Yeah, it's kind of funny. We saw Innovation versus Patience yesterday on King Sejong Station. Innovation was able to win that game, but it was a close one. It went to uh, about 15 minutes in, and wow, that's a cool serve by you there. <laughs> I would get it. You would he, get he it. You would get it. <laughs> Looks like a, a JL shirt as well. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's kind of funny that they hit each other again here, except on a different map, Frozen Temple. And I wonder which team is the one that wants this player to play against the other one, and if they're specifically sniping that player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is it SK Telecom that wants uh, Innovation to play against Patience uh, specifically? Or is it the opposite way? Or is it just happening randomly twice in a row? Well, I think that this is a map that's historically uh, Terran favored in this matchup, Frozen Temple. It's a map we've seen a lot of really cool Terran pushes. We've seen uh, defensive positions with tanks and things of that nature. Um, I mean, it's a map we've also seen the Cyclone build that be the most popular one. What I think is the case is that Patience has a build prepared for a Terran. Maybe he wasn't thinking it was going to be Innovation to start. Maybe he was thinking he might dream here. But I think that Patience has a plan. And as we talked about yesterday, uh, you don't have a lot of time to repair. You had a lot more time to repair for the regular entry format that we have on day one than you actually do in the second day. I mean, they, they announced the lineups, I think, around 10 or 11 p.m. And, I mean, now it's uh, 6 o'clock Korean Standard Time, so we're talking very little time to prepare. Yeah, and the other thing about this is that uh, yesterday we had six players coming out here, so we really got to see the depth of both uh, teams here and which players they wanted to use as their top six. But today we're only going to get to see four. Uh, yeah. Um, the stats here for the Freaks, I think actually is just their disqualification, <laughs> um, if I'm not mistaken. Because they have one loss in all types of uh, <laughs> format otherwise. Um, two kills, Curious, one time. Four kills Billowy uh, when he was on MVP, actually. Yeah. Uh, did get that all kill over SKT, which was a huge upset. Um, <laughs> and then look at the other side. Innovation has gotten so many two kills, three kills, and four kills. Yeah, in total, he has eight uh, multi kills in this format. And this is the format that SKT does best in, I'd say. Um, but. I, if you take it the other way around, because Curious is such a strong player for the Freaks right now, if he carries, he can win uh, you know, this match for them alone by himself. But it's going to be tough. He's going to have to go through big giants here. The bigger your roster, the better you are in the entry format. If you have so many players that can play all sorts of different matchups, you're not really worried about who you hit in that 1v1. But if you have one carry player, you have a chance. And, and SKT has like seven carry players, but the Freaks have Curious and he can really shine here. Frozen Temple is going to be the first map. It'll be the repeat map as well. We don't see New Gettysburg until later on. Mm. That could be the map we see Curious come out on if we survive to or that Or Overgrowth, point. you know? Go Overgrowth, New Gettysburg, and Frozen Temple. Those are three maps in a row that are not bad for Zerg. And if Innovation takes three wins in a row, you know, maybe he has to come out on Dusk Towers, but I would expect someone else on Afrika to come out here and get at least one kill, you know? I do not think this is going to be an all-kill tonight. We don't do winner's predictions in the all-kill format, so, you know, who knows? Anything could happen here, but I expect this is probably going to be a 4-1 or so. That's that's my official prediction. I would like to see a good performance out of the Freaks tonight. They didn't do so bad uh, yesterday as well. I mean, they looked pretty solid, um, better than even I expected there. Uh, Curious taking that win over Classic, and, of course, uh, Zone even coming out. Hmm. Someone that could play today, but very unlikely to play for SKT. Yeah, very true. 
And uh, I'm very curious to get into this. This is just uh, the photo card event, of course. If you come down, you can get the signed photo cards uh, by the players. Uh, you need to, you know, you have to, I'm not sure exactly what you have to do here, but uh, for you guys who are watching back at home, uh, not really going to pertain to you unless you do come down to the yeah. studio. I think you just go to the desk and buy like a, a, some sort of ticket. I think it's a raffle. Um, and uh, you can also buy Pro League shirts down here. And we have popcorn and drinks as refreshments. Come down and watch this live. But innovation, 10 and 5 in this regular season. By the way, these records do not count round finals nor or, or playoffs. And they do not count grand postseason. This is only regular season best of ones. The Alco format does not come into this. So he's even better than that record shows at the 10 and 5. And he is massively the favorite here to beat Patience again. Patience on the other side of things. Narrowly, just barely under that 50% record at 6 and 7. And that's generally pretty good. You know, when you, when you come out here and uh, you're playing against the best players in the world regularly over and over and over again and best of ones, unless you're at the tippy top of the group, you know, the top tier players, Zest, TY, uh, Sue even is up there. You know, that top list of winners rankings, you're, you're, it's going to be hard to get over 50%. And Patience, I mean, he's still a fantastic player. Trust me, he could go abroad and still win any of those tournaments. You know what I'm saying? So easily. He can come over here. Let's see what he can do against Innovation now on Frozen Temple for game number one. Here in the top left in the orange for SK Telecom T1, it is Innovation. And his opponent to the bottom right in purple, it is Patience. The ex Dead Pixel player. This season was uh, considered by many to be his first Pro League season. He did play one official game uh, in a different season. I don't know when that was, I just looked at his stats, but. Uh, Basically, this is the first year of Patience playing regularly in Pro League uh, on the team that changed sponsors multiple times from Startail here to the Freaks. Startail and then Spenu and then the Freaks. Yes. Going down the line, although the Freaks, I, I feel like, will be a lot more solid. I think they'll stick around here, especially I think so. as they're doing a lot of other stuff in esports as well. Yeah. It's sad to see the Startail team uh, name go. It's been kind of a household name in StarCraft II since the beginning, and also very briefly in League of Legends as well. But uh, now we're in a new era. Who is Polish Brothers just admitted already? I am better than Artu, who's better than Matisse. Protoss is Imba. Protoss is <laughs> Imba, man. We got some really strong Polish Protoss players uh, out there, man. Mana, I'm proud, but. Uh, See what happens here in this first game. We are going to see a quick Nexus come down. The probe goes over and scouts. And it's not going to be that early cannoning at this stage of the game that Swing Innovation will be looking for later. As is the gate Nexus core build. Pretty standard. You see him continuously trying to get that SCV to go on the other side of the supply depot because uh, the probe was harassing it, of course. But as the Marine finishes up, and look this at this. Tech Lab uh, is, the scout is denied. This is why I think Patience was coming out on this map, is to do some sort of snipe build against Innovation. Now, it's tough to predict that Innovation would do a Cyclone build on this map. It's not really his style. He's more of a macro-oriented uh, player who doesn't really go for these kind of pushes or timing builds. He very rarely will do um, what people refer to as cheese. But let's see. I mean, I expect this will just be a quick Cyclone. There it is. And I mean, this is a really fast one too, so. Already uh, rallied, rather, across the map. So he wants to get that damage done ASAP. Stargate is gonna be the tech of choice here for the Protoss. This is uh, not good against what Innovation has chosen unless he goes Phoenixes first, which would be kind of weird. Um, obviously the Cyclone can deal with the Oracle really easily. And uh, this Cyclone is gonna be there before the Oracle even finishes. So he might decide to kind of change what he's doing here. Um, let's see if he rallies a second one. Nope, gonna go for a Widowmine. 
And he's this cyclone is scouted. Yeah, it's it's scouted, and he's following it up with two more racks. So he's going to have three racks and the cyclone out with some other factory units very very quickly. Look at this. This step adept is not getting away. He's going to get a free kill already. We don't know if this is going to be a huge all in here from innovation uh, off these two bases. If he's actually going to get that. Uh, natural up and running or is it just going to be some pressure with the cyclone into follow-up pressure it looks like he just wants to pressure the probe oh. here the probe surround at the top of the ramp he did not have vision this is still going to get three kills in total that with the adept and the fourth uh kill they're not gonna die that last probe but this means the oracle is a lot more powerful he doesn't scout this either he's just gonna walk a widow mine across the cat is he gonna is get that bro is this real oh he wants to burrow it well, they pass in the night. He's going to burrow it at the third base. Okay, so looks like that was not intended for the Oracle. I was about to say, I think he's cheating. Um, that would have been crazy. <laughs> uh, I mean, that would just be crazy if he if he had that timing down. He's like, for Protoss players who go Oracle, I can get my Widow Mine there. Maybe he was just a little bit late because of his micro or something. All right, well, this is two Adepts here with this Oracle, so it's going to be difficult to deal with. The Marines actually target the Oracle, which gives a... You know, a little bit more flexibility to this push. You know, the Oracle is going to be killed here, and this is a little bit similar to what we saw yesterday um, with Zone um, in the process. Process these Afrika Protoss supers, Oracle Micro just not as crisp, and uh, we definitely could have seen that one saved there. Now this follow-up shade, he cancels it. The, a lot of those Marines are damaged from earlier, and without combat shields, I mean, even unupgraded uh, adepts do decently well. He's pressuring a lot here. This third base can't be planted unless he makes another Oracle to detect that. Ooh, oh, did man. not cancel this. And that's way too many Marines this time. I mean, he's taking these traits that are just not working out for him. You know, he, he missed... I, I wouldn't say that he missed his timing with the Adepts and the Oracle. You know, we've seen that work against other Terran builds, but the one that Innovation chose specifically with the three racks, it, you just get so many infantry units out so fast that... It's going to be a lot easier to defend this kind of push. And patience, I, I think I think that was definitely a mistake to not cancel that there. Oh, Look man. at this. Okay, I was, oh. I was freaking out. I had I had less faith than I should have. <laughs> um, but uh, he's just simply going to move this away. He had to make that second Oracle for this. He didn't have uh, a Robo, nor did he have Forges yet to make cannons. So this is the only way to clear this so he can finally get a third base so late um, this is not normally when you would have that third base up. Does start it here. Innovation wants to punish this though. He has stim already. Combat shields and plus one. It all lines up. Oh, look at that. The second sneaky Widowmine gets the Oracle. As it was kind of just floating through the middle of the map. Didn't seem to have much uh, direction there. This is going to get messy here in a minute because he's not going to have claves in time. I mean, Innovation is going to walk across the map here with some really heavy pressure. With a ton of Marines, oh, yeah. plus one, stem the combat shields, medivacs. This Nexus isn't even complete yet. And it looks like he's not going to commit as hard as I thought because he's kind of a little bit concerned about what patients might do to him back at home. He's just going to send two drops. If he had moved his whole army out, he might be able to end the game. Now he's going to encounter these Phoenixes. He needs to react quickly. He needs to drop in patience with the immediate response here but does not get uh, onto those medevacs. And that is a lot of adepts. I'm not sure that the low amount of 16 Marines and two medevacs can fight against that. They don't have glaives yet, and the Marines do have plus one, but I still am a little bit skeptical myself. He is going to stim and lift, it looks like. Kites up the ramp. Maybe without the glaives, he actually may have been able to do a bit I of damage, but with the Phoenixes coming over and more reinforcements from the Terran, he wants to wait here and group up and then take the attack. He was a bit worried about the Phoenix, just didn't want to do a full lift there. And uh, now he's going to link it up with the rest of his army. Glaive's done in 10. The Phoenixes can actually pick off that weakened medevac if he goes now. Looks like he's not looking for that, looking for maybe catching reinforcements. Okay, here he comes in. He's going to commit to the fight here. The Shades are not timed out with these Phoenixes, but now they're in. Glaives are done here. This is still a lot of bio with plus one, and he's going to win the fight. Stimming forward now. Medivac's lost here, but the entire ground army of patience is decimated, and that may just simply be game here. He has two pylons to overcharge, but Innovation's army is huge, and he can get an angle here out of range. That third pylon is way too late, and down goes the Mothership Core oh, as well. Man. 
Nice snipe there. Innovation is really just on point today. So, so crisp with all of his timings and his micro, his multitasking, where his patience not really on the same level at this point. Yeah, definitely not in this first game here tonight. Uh, he's just decimated. His army is half the size of Innovations. He's going to escort these Widow Mines here. Nice stop on the Burrow there, but the bigger problem here is the drop in the main. He can't deal with the attack in his third and the drop in his main. He's starting to be unpowered here with his gateways. So many probes going down, and uh, he's just going to trade with these Adepts as best as possible. Looks like Patience may survive this, but for how much longer? Look at the supplies. You can see them at the top right of your screen. It kind of tells yeah. the story. Liberators of the follow-up. And you, you look at other Terrans who are playing this matchup right now in Korea, and you see a lot of floating of the main and like just barely holding on, and it looks like the Protoss is majorly in control of the fights, or rather of the game for a long time. But Innovation, he's, he's this guy he has been showing a lot, just making the third orbital, third CC on the low ground. He's not scared to. He's in control of the game. He's the one dropping and out multitasking his opponent. It's really awesome to see. I mean, Innovation didn't have the best uh, season of Pro League this year. I feel like he was a bit more dominant in the last season, but uh, still, I mean, it seems like he's coming back. You know, he's, he's really good here. Yeah. I mean, SKT as a whole had a, had some trouble in round three. I think 10 and 5 is still very respectable. Mm. Um, I mean, that's double, double wins um, for, over your losses, so it's still a pretty good KDA, if you will, but uh, I... I think that this game is going to be ended soon. Patience doesn't have any sort of uh, gimmicky rabbit to pull out of his hat here. Like, he doesn't have a Dark Shrine even. Uh, no Warp Prism on the map. So, if, if, if Innovation moves across the map, he simply dies, and he has no way to, br to bring Innovation back home. I think he's, he's just hoping that Innovation doesn't realize how ahead he is, and maybe he could slowly max out here. But Innovation is moving across the map now. He waited a while. He even made a sensor tower, too. I mean, he is being so safe about it. He's really covering all of his bases, you know? Just making sure that he's not going to be hit by some kind of crazy base trade scenario. Um, shades all of those Adepts there. Uh, definitely just wanted to scout. He's going to pack up. He has force fields he can drop to buy time. But it's not going to buy time forever. Nice force fields indeed, but this is a numbers issue. Uh, and he just does not have enough. Mothership Core is back online, he overcharges the wrong pylon, perhaps hoping Innovation would dive over the Nexus, but he's not. He's carefully positioned here on the bottom, and this base will have to be evacuated, but there is no plan B here. If this Nexus dies, what does he plan to achieve? Yeah, it's like either try to take the fight there or die anyway, because you're going to lose your Nexus. Look at just how much Terran is here, pushing in now against this Protoss army. You can really see GG. GG. You can see how good of a player Patience is when he fights even down, but against any Terran that plays in this tournament, uh, when you're down that much, you've lost so much early game, you're not going to win that fight. The game will be ended. He tried to hold on. He was hoping Innovation would make a mistake, but Innovation does not know the meaning of the word mistake. So there you have it. Innovation takes the first kill and brings the momentum here to SKT. King Sejong Station will be the next map. Hmm. I wonder who they're going to use for this. I, I don't think it can be a Zerg. Uh, you know, not only because it's not a great map against Turn as the Zerg here, but also because uh, they don't want to use Curious just yet. And I don't think we're going to be seeing Symbol. I don't right? think so. Yeah, I, I don't think they can use Super right now either. I think Super you have to save for Dust Towers um, for later on. I, uh, yeah. I'm starting to feel like it's it might even have to be alive. It's tough Going to TVT, TVT against but innovation. Yeah, I mean I think Alive's TVT is solid. It's not as solid as Innovations is, at least not right now. But I think they do have a decent shot of maybe even having Alive do a Banshee opening that gets a little bit ahead, or maybe even some sort of cheese on this two-player map. The second map is always the most important one because that's where you know who you're playing against and you know what the map is in the all format. It's the one you can prepare the most for. Yeah. So they definitely have a plan here. Uh, and I don't know what it is yet, but we're about to find out. I personally am leaning towards Alive myself. I think Curious is way too soon to use him here. The thing about Super is that he, he did defeat Innovation on this map one time. Just one time. Okay? It was just like a best of one against Innovation. It doesn't really say all that much, but... King Sejong Station is a weird map that if the Terran can hold on in the early game, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be really happy. He's going to be in a great spot on the map. But if the Protoss has, like, so many different options, so many crazy builds. You saw Patience come out on that map uh, yesterday. 
uh, against Innovation specifically. He did a crazy build with the Proxy Oracle, and it got a lot of damage, but Innovation held on, and then from there he was able to finish out the game. So yeah. I, I understand Alive, I understand Super too. I don't think it can be Curious, and I think those are the three players that you need to use because there's no one else on, on Afrika right now that's better than those three players. And as I said before, it's you only get four players that come out here. So Yeah, I mean, you, you really have to choose wisely, uh, and I do think we are probably going to see Alive and Curious and Super as the last three players. Yeah. It's a matter of where you're going to use them, what maps you want to choose them for. Um, because obviously when you win, when you take a win, you know what the map that is coming next is beyond who your opponent is. Mm. So you can't always know, like you can't always consistently prepare for two wins. But like we talked about later, when you look at the map list, when you go into Overgrowth, New Gettysburg, and then Frozen Temple, that's like a time where I'm like, okay, well, those are kind of three good Zerg mark maps. So you want to save him for that moment. But on the other hand, you have to survive until then. How do you, you get there? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like so it's... It's definitely a, it, it can be more of an exciting moment when you have, say, like SKT versus, um, you know, KT rolls where it's like a closer series mm. and we're going all the way, then everything gets a little bit more detailed, but now it's a matter of survival. Uh, and do you take risks? Do you send Curious out now to try to take the momentum away? I personally think no. We're going to have the reveal.